Welcome to Coastal Front. Join us each week as we sit down with the movers and shakers of Vancouver to discuss stories of business, politics, accomplishment, and failure. Our aim is to keep you dialed into what matters most in our city. Now, here's your host, Andrew Johns. Super. I'm so excited to have you here today. We have Sandra Philosoph Shipper. Very good. Uh, you are the you're the PPC, the People's Party of Canada candidate for uh, Vancouver Quadra. Thanks for coming today, Sandra. Thank you so much for having me. Now, I'm excited because you're the first, other than Maxime, who I know fairly well, you're the first People's Party person I know that's running as a candidate in this election. So I'm really excited to get your view on this and, and see how much Great. you echo the actual party. One of the things I like about Maxime is that he's um, he's not, as we talked about before, we got on camera about you know whipping people into their certain beliefs. He's a big believer of letting people be, have independent thought, and and I'm a big fan of that. And it sounds like you are too. I really am, and yeah. um, and we've got 315 candidates running in this election, which yeah. is remarkable for one year's work. It's been a year, just yeah. over a year. Um, yeah, and that is something I really like because I don't. I'm not going to agree with everyone, and I don't want to just toe the party line. I'm not a professional politician. Yeah, I'm a citizen, and I also firmly believe country above party. Yeah. So when you know Max told us, bring your own thoughts, bring your own ideas, and I know um, there's some things I'm not going to agree with with the other with the other MPs, assuming we yeah. all get in there. Yeah. Um, and and that's okay. We can we can have an honest discussion. And and Maxine keeps saying this. You hear it again and again and again. We can have a discussion. Yeah. So it doesn't necessarily guarantee of where we're going to land, but yeah. that's that's important to me. Yeah. 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 That's great. And now, I know, wh- when did you when did you become the candidate for Vancouver Quadra? Um. Ooh, summer. Summertime. Yeah, late. Yeah, yeah early and how summer. How did you get like? How did this become? Because you said you're not a, obviously a career politician. No, nope, I'm not. Um, like, what, what's your background? Maybe you can speak to that for a moment. And how you got to becoming the candidate for PPC in Vancouver Quadra? Sure. Well, I just um start from the beginning yeah and I, I was saying this to everyone I consider my family an immigrant success story okay I was born in Istanbul we moved yeah. here in 1971 okay and you know I'm, I don't know if it's a typical story my dad had a little bit of capital not not Vancouver kind of money but yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, that's a whole other game now yeah but you know he started a business and and we grew and it was good and, and he's always happy to be here now when at the time we were they were my parents were deciding to move out of there they they wanted to go somewhere with more freedom, somewhere you didn't have to wonder about your government, where corruption yeah. wasn't normal. And they looked at other countries, but you know, my dad came here. He liked Montreal, and then he yeah. saw Vancouver. Yeah. And it was spring, and the pink oh, yeah. trees were out. <laughs> Called my mom. This is it. This is where we're going. Really? So here we are. So and, and so out of interest, I don't want to digress too much. But what was Turkey like in the seventies? Was it a bit of a hostile environment no. for citizens, or was it no? A, it no? was. Um, it wasn't then, but they they saw. They saw the writing on the wall a little bit. They saw changes coming and and, and it came to fruition much later than they expected. Yeah. But yes. um, uh, So the whole freedom thing, the whole, they're very, uh, and I use this word as it's meant, they're very liberal. Yeah. As am I, which is why I'm running with the PPC. Yeah. (laughs) And, and, uh, And they just wanted that kind of environment and that's why they chose Canada. So yeah. Here we are and now why I started I'm seeing that kind of starting to be eroded just a tiny little bit at a time yeah. and I kind of wonder I worry now they're telling us what to say and what yeah. we can't say and and um and and I feel like it's more than just a tiny little bit at a time it's oh, like it's going to turn around yeah. it's like there's more of a big brother or big government big brother kind of, statist mentality yeah. I have a problem with that and yeah. it's always the people that are going on and on about freedom that are the most willing to take it away from someone else yeah Sure. And that's, I mean, we have to be free to disagree. Well, the whole narrative on the far left seems to be one where we want to be inclusive and diversity, yet the reality is they're not inclusive unless you think along their lines. I mean, they're it's quite exclusive. And, and it's, also, it's I think a, it's such an irony. It's a, it's, it is an irony, but they don't see it. And it comes yeah. from a place of privilege. And I, yeah. I hate to, to use that yeah. vernacular of, of the day there, but. Um, it's actually kind of racist also when you start dividing people up by their their sure. race, their religion, their background. And, um, you know, I've been called a white nationalist. For heaven's sake, I'm barely white. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and and, and, and you, 
I'm being accused of is a racist party. Have you yeah. looked at our lineup of candidates? So no, the answer yeah. is no, they have not. If you click yeah. on the page, you will see multicolors, yeah. last names from all over the world, people with thick accents yeah. running as our of candidates. Course. And they're just not even bothering to look. Yeah. They saw a meme well, on Facebook. The, and, that's, and a, that's the problem with the trolls and the internet. They go deep yeah. research for them as a second click on a Twitter account, right? Yeah. And they don't and really I think, look at the, they, they look at the surface. Only. Yeah. And, and no, no, none of them actually look at, at, at Max's platform. Yeah. And, yeah. and you go listen to speech after speech. There's yeah. nothing hateful. No, not at all. And my favorite one is fascist. He is yeah. literally the only one that wants to increase Canadian freedom. Right. Yeah. <laughs> literally the amazing. only one. It's amazing. <laughs> and they're calling. Well, I know. I'm a big. I, I'm a big fan of Maxime. I think it's great. But let's not let my bias uh, come into this play. Let's talk about. Let's get into some specific topics that are okay. Huge, are sort of important topics for residents of Vancouver Quadra, which I'm one of. One of the things is about. Uh, the pipelines. And yeah. There's a lot of people who uh, don't believe in having more pipeline, you know, producing more traffic in our waterways. And right now, I think the stat is that we have one oil tanker about once every three days. It's, coming sli through. it's slightly more than that, slightly but not a that. lot more. Yeah. Um, but there would be a huge increase with the doubling of the Trans Mountain Pipeline. Yeah, it'd, so. it'd be, it de depends who you ask, but about one a day is kind of yeah. what yeah. I'm hearing. Yeah. So, so what are your thoughts on that? I'm pro pipeline okay. and not because I love oil spills or anything like that. I don't, yeah. I live here too. And yeah. when I'm not doing this, I'm playing outside somewhere. Yeah. So it, it is important to me. Um, the thing about the pipeline is if Canada fully gets out of the oil business, doesn't do anything in it, we stop driving, we stop doing everything. We're not going to make a lick of difference in the world. Okay. In terms of our carbon footprint and all that. Yeah. There are lots of reasons for the pipeline. So if we have this pipeline, we're actually going to have a smaller footprint because the, the oil right now is traveling down south toward the states, getting on a ship and moving around the Pan Panama Canal and then going to Asia. So we need to kind of get a more direct route. That, that leaves a lot more room for, for spills and stuff. And by the way, nothing's sp spilling in the Panama Canal because the Panamanian captains are, are captaining these ships. Yeah. It doesn't matter who owns them. So... This is also our rule in, in Canada. Yes. We we get towed by by Canadian by Canadian tugboat drivers. Yeah. And so it's not just any Yahoo with a yeah. ship can come yeah. in and do whatever yeah. they want. And and since the, the tragedy of the Exxon Valdez, that actually changed the, the laws in the whole world. All the yeah. ships that come up and down near anywhere near us are double hulled. Yeah. So I think the the chances of a big spill are are really limited. Um I went to a couple of uh of lectures and talks about pipelines and stuff. And what I'm hearing about the newer, more current safety measures make me feel a lot more comfortable about this. Okay. But now I want to go back to where is Canada's place in the world's oil business. Sure. So right now, what little what oil we produce, and we're still bringing in a lot from Saudi Arabia yeah. and other places in those that region. Right. And yeah. we have to actually wonder. You we're know, importing what, a lot from Saudi Arabia from in, going into Eastern Canada. Yeah, Eastern and, Canada. Yeah. And it's and been processed well, at Irving Oil Centers. And correct. Yeah. yeah. And then what? And then we end up sending some of that down to the states at a twenty five percent discount. Yeah. And they charge whomever else as much as they want for it, or the world yeah. price. Yeah. That's our money. Yeah. And and worse, it's being subsidized by tax dollars up here in Canada because the the oil and gas industry is getting subsidies. Yeah. So that that needs to end. But um. So that's what I find fascinating. Let me just hold We're you. We're actually for a second. subsidizing the Americans is, is, here. Is the <laughs> two parties who have been adamant about ending crony capitalism, ending the subsidies for big corporations are the People's Party of Canada mm -hmm. and the NDP. And it's yeah. amazing because there's like, it just goes to show you how certain policies some Canadians can really come to agreement on, even if the, a lot of other things they don't agree with. We're all Canadian. Yeah. And that's another thing. I'm, just, I'm jumping around a bit yeah. here, but people keep asking me, PPC, tell me about that. Are you left wing or are you right wing? I can't even yeah. count how many times I hear that. I just right. say no. And, and there is more than one choice. Yeah. You know? It's yeah, like, and that's what Maxime always says. Yeah. Too. yeah, that's, yeah. That's, those aren't the only options. Yeah. Right? So you are pro-pipeline. I am pro-pipeline. We are pro-pipeline. If, if you were an MP in, in, in Ottawa representing Vancouver Quadra, what would you, are you comfortable already with the current standards to ensure there is no spills? Or would you look to advocate to increase the, uh, to minimize the probability of a spill even further than what were the standards we see today. Okay, I don't know the standards if there's, that well. Oh, yeah, yeah. well, I've, I've done a little bit of work okay. and I'm, I'm happy with it. But if someone comes out with a 
a b- even better policy. I'm yeah. I'm all for it. Yeah. Obviously, but it's good to be sure, but it's even better to be absolutely sure. Yeah. So, back to my point. It, the thing is, if if Canada was not in the oil business, it would most certainly still exist. Yeah. I trust Canada the most to, first of all, with the revenues, we're not going to be funding foreign wars like in other places that they do. If you wonder yeah. where the money for Yemen is coming. Yeah, sure. Figure of it course. out. Okay. Yeah. And then and then we are, are the ones that are going to uphold spill procedures and stuff. I can't speak for any other country's spill procedures yeah. and their protocols, but I know we will do a good job because we care that much. Right. I also can't speak to any other country's um, employment standards for, for the people out in the oil fields. That's not a safe job always. Yeah. So I know Canada will do the best job at it. The most important part is we are nowhere near, we as in the entire world, nowhere near an oil-free economy. We're not right. there. So yeah. in the absence of an economic replacement, yeah. We may as well just be the best at it. Sure. At the same time, the the PPC will continue funding the scientific community. Yeah. I mean, we also want to end up in an oil free world yeah. for the most of us. We we do. Some of us are deniers, but you know th- yeah. that's fine too. We're going to end up in the same place. Yeah. It, whether you call it this kind of pollution or that, even if you don't believe in climate change, yeah. you can believe in pollution. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we absolutely. need to get there, right? Yeah, so 100%. for me, that's not even a discussion anymore. Yeah. That that's a religion. Yeah. You, you can't separate the politics from the from the science anymore. Yeah. So. Yeah. If you just if you believe in pollution, then we need to be acting. Okay. So, so if we look at the if we look at the Liberal Party, mm-hmm. I mean, you're up against Joyce Murray. Yeah. She's a well embedded candidate, you know, incumbent. Mm-hmm. Um, the the uh, Liberal Party of Canada uh, announced last summer that we had a climate crisis, mm. and then the next day they bought a pipeline. Yeah. And. Uh, what I like about people like they, you, they, we, we bought a pipeline. Oh, we did. we yeah. all our, bought yeah. a pipeline with our hard earned yeah. cash. Our taxpayers, <laughs> yeah. taxpayers bought a pipeline. Um, uh, what I like about what you're telling me is not so much about that I agree with your view, but you actually take a side. And what I find is odd about the Liberal Party of Canada is they say one thing and then they do another. And it seems like it depends on who they're in front of, who their audience is, is, yeah. is who they decide, how they decide to, what their narrative is going to be like. Like, How can you call a climate crisis and then buy a pipeline the next day? Or get on a private plane. Or, or two of them. Or two. <laughs> I've seen the latest. <laughs> and then send, send, it, send it back for your kids yeah. so they don't have to miss a day of school. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So what are your views on, 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 on the Liberal Party buying this pipeline with Canadian tax dollars? And yet we haven't seen, I mean, you know, if they were going to have that kind of conviction and make that kind of investment, you'd think that we would have seen some kind of result in it's been 12 months. There hasn't been really much that I've seen. I don't believe that they believe in investment. I mean, mm-hmm. hearing, you know, I've been in these debates hearing Joyce, they're having trouble discerning between what is an investment, meaning it will u- yield future benefits and an expenditure or expense. Right. So what I'm hearing is being called investment is really just money being thrown away or not expected to give returns. So I don't know if they bought it just to make sure it doesn't happen. That could be, it's a little disingenuous. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think their goal is to get reelected. It's not a very principled stance. I mean, yeah. you say what you will about the other parties, but they're consistent yeah. Yeah. about what they believe and what they want. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, any more comments you want to make about pipelines? I mean, you sound pretty clear on it, but if there's any I'm pretty else. clear. Okay. It's just that if we're Good. not doing it, someone else will. Yeah. So it just point. doesn't matter. Okay. It, we need to be the best at it. I trust us to be the best at it. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a very good point. Yeah. Okay, Sandra, let's jump now to uh, affordability of housing. Okay. Another big topic in your it area. It is. Um, I'm assuming this is something you're hearing from some of your constituents. I am hearing it a lot, and yeah. I wish I, I, I think... Um, our provincial and municipal government needs to be a little bit more active there. There's only so much the feds can do. Yeah. So our party wants to lower taxes. So at least you'll have a little more money. We yeah. want to lower the debt sure. a lot. We're the only ones that are actually talking about attacking it within within one cycle. So, and you know, we, we can talk more about how we're going to come sure. up with the money for all that, Yeah. which, which is, we want to end corporate welfare right there. Yeah. Like, right away like yeah. wean everyone off of it and, yeah. and get it gone that's billions of dollars every year and that's that's also in, a, in a, an environment of, of historically very low interest rates yeah so what are we going to do when when if we don't do anything different just interest rates go up yeah that's going to be even more it's oh, our yeah. third biggest expense well we're paying uh 26 billion 26 a year. billion and our and whole health care is and 40. that's all-time low interest rates yes all-time low so if we interest rate and it, it 
it doesn't take much to double when your interest rates are only at 2%. If interest rates are at 6, then to double, you got to go. But it would yeah. take very little for our interest rate costs to go from 26 billion a year to $52 billion a year. It would take very little. And that's a lot of money. And I that's, just, that's more than our whole nationalized health care. Yeah. Yes. And, yeah. I, and what I'm wondering, Sandra, it seems to me like one of the challenges that people like you have mm -hmm. is trying to get Canadians to understand that because I feel like... It's a lot of money. It, they can't tell the difference between millions and billions well, if yeah, you're not paying attention well, all also, the time. Yeah. Not, not only that, that it's it, it creeps up on you over time, right? And that's yeah. why that's why I think it's valid to say that this is a cost that really our children are going to be paying more so than ourselves. Exactly. Because you can carry this debt for so long, but eventually you get yourself into a situation. Well, you got to pay the piper. The the, the 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 bonds are going to want to be cashed, et cetera, et yeah. cetera. So yeah, and also what we've so also let's go been, going back to affordable housing though. Like okay. what what are some of the things if you're if you were elected as MP for Vancouver yep. Quadra? What are some of the things, can you give me some specifics on the things that you would be doing in Ottawa to advocate for better, you know, allowing people to have, be able to have, afford a home? Sounds like you're saying one of the things is actually to start off by, by having more money taxes, in your pocket. More money in your pocket. So that's good. Okay. I mean, I would, I would advocate. And again, there's, there's a lot of provincial. Yeah, sure. Maxime Bernier first wants to get the, the debt down to something manageable. And then within a couple of years, be able to, to drop the tax rates to two tax rates. Um, 15 flat for if you're earning under $100,000 $100, or less and 25% as a maximum marginal rate. Yeah. And that'll just simplify a lot of things. He wants to end boutique taxes and, and that'll just make it a lot easier. Even just in, in managing that, as I know so few people that can do their own taxes. Oh, for sure. In, including me. And I'm not, I'm yeah. not dumb. I mean, it's just, you know, I, I do yeah. business. I've, I've, you know, that's my education as well. And if yeah. I need help, yeah. you know, everyone needs help. I mean, that's, that's why that's a lot of money. like H&R Block yeah. do so well because yeah. it's become so complex the that, tax code is so yeah. complex and yeah. people are not able to take you know take yeah. the take advantage of the breaks that you may get yeah and I'd, I'd rather see just no breaks and a nice lower rate yeah nice clean and simple so yeah. that is one way the fe federals can do it but our main problem here is it's here vancouver and also toronto yeah and and that's because also a lot of um all the immigrants come here yeah. and there that's where they want to be so it drives up the, the demand yeah. And so what, what we need to do, and this is more municipal and provincial, is let the builders build. Okay. I was looking into this, and this isn't a federal problem, but I do want to address it. Um, I looked, uh, if you want to build a building, you're a developer, and you have the money, you're ready to go, you found your spot, you're one and a half to three years from breaking, down, breaking ground. Right. That's, that's amazing. That's amazing, and yeah. that's normal. So you, Sanders, so are you implying then that, that one of the issues we have in Vancouver Quadra for people who are having a hard time, I mean, I look at you, Ross, I mean, you, you have, uh, there's five of you that live in a home? Yeah. There's five, five, five guys. I'm sure it's a great place to be on a Saturday night when it's you're hosting bad, a party, yeah. but, yeah. um, so, <laughs> and, and how much do you rent do you guys pay each? Uh, it comes around, it's about a thousand dollars per person. That per person. And you have four roommates. Yeah. yeah, and they got yeah. So, so if all, you had a wife and a couple of kids. Yeah. 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 So, so. When we look at that, and you look at the the cost of housing in Vancouver Quadra, which is very high, it's like you know some of the some of the postal codes in our in our uh, sort of neighborhoods are some of the highest cost homes in the entire per country. square foot. Yes, per square they foot. are per square yeah. foot. They definitely are. So, your your view is that there's there's not enough supply. Is I, that that your, is that is one view. Yeah. There's not a lot of supply. There are foreign buyers that are coming in and parking their money. It's yeah. not an investment if you're not yeah. yielding a return. I mean, if my you're neighborhood just is full empty. of empty homes. Even yeah. with these empty homes tax, which I think they're actually the the residents or the owners, I think are just falsely. They're either paying a ton of tax, which I doubt. Yeah, or, or they're, they're just, they're lying. I mean, I yeah, so we had to go click, click, click online. Well, if they we could lied to get their money in the country in the first place. Yeah, they, I don't think they'd they have money, a problem with lying. If they laundered lying. their money to get here in the first place, yeah. a little so, lie, a little white lie that I actually live in this house is probably not that hard. Yeah, and yeah. I and I saw some, another interviewer was asking about, uh, and I had to look it up, but it, apparently there's a lot of um, smuggling in of people selling them false uh, false citizenships. Oh, is that right? This. So that's mm -hmm. happening in Vancouver too. Yeah. So, which is so how unfortunate. Would you, so, you, so you figure maybe supply would you, increase supply, supply will help. And I want yeah. you know, as a as a PPC person and someone who values liberty in general, we don't need the government to be too too heavy handed with this. We still have yeah. to allow freedom. You know, when they first told us you have to 
you have to vow that this is your house and you live in it. I said, what if I don't live in it? What if I want a house that's empty? It's my house. Yeah. It's my property. Right. I think private property laws are part of, you know, just strong whole, society. It's a strong yeah. society. Yeah. But then I can sort of also understand that people are parking their money here. And yeah. as I said, parking it, not investing it. If you're yeah. parking it and leaving, if you're buying it and leaving it empty, it, it depletes the rental rental of the available rentals. Yeah. And and you're just not really investing. Because you yeah. know, if you have an investment property, you want to get that rental revenue. That's when yeah. it's an investment. So they're parking it because it might not be above board money, as yeah. you said. Yeah. They might have lied to get it in here in the first place. Yeah. So that does make me nervous. Um yeah. I hate that people who live here have to go out and, and and swear that it's ours and and et cetera, et cetera. And the people that are going to lie are going to lie anyway. Yeah, sure. But Good point. I, I don't like that. But feeling. it sounds to me like what you're saying is that it's a supply issue, but part of the problem is at the government level, provincially and locally. Yeah. If you were actually to you know, be able to fast track these developers' projects, yes. you'd bring out a lot more supply. And then you would be able to have that would drive I mean, the price down. I don't know I mean, if it would drive the price down, but you know, it so should. I mean, it, yeah. it should. It'll help. Yeah. That's yeah. one thing. Absolutely. We could talk about limiting foreign ownership in general. Yeah. Um, would you be supportive of that? I don't know if I like that idea either. Yeah. It's 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 an it's a bit of an attack on liberty. Yeah. But it's something we could look at again, yeah. as Max would say. We could have a discussion. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I would I would look at it. Part of me just. Part of me says no; it's against liberty. I myself yeah. have a have a place in the states, and yeah, sure. and but you know, I pay tax and and yeah. I rent it out. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. What, yeah. Well, you know, I, I I had a podcast a little while ago with Tom Davidoff, who's uh, one of the professors at UBC in urban and land economics, and he mm-hmm. and I have, I believe, I mean, he supported my belief on this, which is that there's actually an economic benefit to having foreign owners come in, especially when they're buying like ultra expensive homes because they're not affordable even if their prices drop by 50%. Yeah. I mean, a house that's $20 million and drops by 50% is still $10 million. Yeah. That's not it's affordable. Not gonna be a, it's not going to help anyone no. at this table. Yeah. And so like one of the things that I, I, I mean, I don't want to digress too much. But one of the things I, I believe we should do with property transfer tax yes. is we actually should lower that tax for very high end homes as long as they get changed hands at least once every two years. Because the only time that government, like realtors, it's funny, realtors and government, provincial government are aligned in property transfer tax. Realtors make money when houses move, Mm -hmm. not whether prices go up or down. And the government also only makes money on property transfer tax when the property transfers, right? So, uh, but let's, okay, like- No, that's interesting. Yeah, so I think there's a merit to having, to encouraging foreign ownership of these ultra high expense. Let them all, let them just, you know, play a game of musical chairs with each other. Have and a bunch and then of, we get that tax revenue. 100%. Why not? <laughs> That's I mean, interesting. I mean, I mean, I, but I think can, if also, let's think the other way, if we eliminated that tax, then other people would have, that reduce the barrier to entry for ownership. Sure. Yeah. So that's something to consider too. Yeah. Yeah. Any thoughts at all about all the uh, changes in mortgage rules that the Ministry of Finance has implemented to make it Make more, it more 30 uh, years? Well, that, no, no. Like, for example, like these stress tests where... Now, if you want to qualify for a mortgage, you have to have two percent. Yeah, you have to qualify at current rates plus two percent. Um, you can't get a more uh, an insured mortgage through CIB, a CM, CMHC. Yeah. Um, if the house value is over a million dollars, which is virtually every home, everything, in yeah. apartments. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I'm not. I think measures like that might just defer in insolvencies for later. Push them down the pipeline a little right. bit. Yeah. Okay. Different pipeline. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, different pipeline. Exactly. Okay, let's yes. let's jump to the Wikipedia page on Vancouver Quadra. Um want to just quickly look at um, the current riding and let's scroll down to the last election. So you're obviously up against Joyce Murray. Mm-hmm. She's a well embedded liberal candidate. Oh, she's Probably, a fixture. She's a fixture for sure. She's been in this role since uh, two thousand and eight. So it's you know, it's been um, eleven years. Uh, so this is this is her uh, fourth, uh, fifth, fifth go at this. Um, the last election, she got fifty six, fifty seven percent of the vote. Yeah, uh, thirty one thousand one hundred and two votes, of which those last two were my wife and I, <laughs> who, neither of whom had ever voted liberal before. Yeah, because I was quite inspired by Justin Trudeau. I'm not inspired by Justin Trudeau today. I'm actually quite disingenuous. Like I think he just. And uh, when you say inspired, yeah. I, I gotta know. <laughs> 
It's like I'm interviewing you now. Yeah, yeah. What, what what inspired you? I'm curious. I was inspired by I I do think we should look at the voting system, and I do like the idea of doing something different. Proportional representation. Yeah, which he some, didn't deliver. No, he said yeah. that if you vote for me, this will be the last time it's a first past the post. Okay. And actually, for the PPC, it's probably better long, like you know, near term to to have a different system because the reality is, it is a you know first past the post means that only a small part of the population gets represented. Yeah. And if you look at the Green Party, for example, they've basically only had Elizabeth May for the last decade, mm -hmm. yet they consistently have on average around 13% of the popular vote. Yeah. You know? um, so I, that was one thing. Uh, he said that he was going to do bit, you know politics differently. He gave great, did a great sales pitch and I bought it and I, I'm not buying it anymore. Uh, but that was that was my rationale back then. I also felt that Stephen Harper. I mean, when I look back at that at the time, I felt that he was had too much of a stronghold on the party, and that this whole philosophy of you know sticking to the party policy is something I def definitely don't like. Yeah, uh, because, I understand that. Yeah, because the way I, I see it relate. is like what's well, you said earlier. I think just before we started filming, like what's if everybody has to be so whipped that they have to go with whatever the party leader says. Why are we even doing all this? Yeah, why are we doing this? Why, why are we, we just why pick, are we electing MPs? Why? Yeah. yeah. Let's just do like a presidential election and just yes. so we'd have Jagmeet and ba Maxime and Justin and, yeah. and and these guys and they can all just run and we all just vote for whoever for them. we think yes. that's it, right? Yeah. So to me that's a that's why I'm really excited to see for example Jody Wilson Raybould. Yeah, I don't even necessarily agree with her views on everything. I'm just glad to see some strong independents hopefully get reelected so they can kind of help spread the vote and not yeah. dis and disrupt things a little you bit. You know, I'll tell you, I gave money to, to Jody's campaign way back then. I told her this yeah. too. She sat next to me at a, a debate. Yeah. And because uh, she's likable. I mean, the, yeah. what I don't like is that she's not one of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, and we don't agree on everything either. But yeah, I, I agree with your point. It's nice yeah. to see an independent out there, a strong independent. Yeah, yeah. And she's strong. She is, yeah. yeah. So, so, so it was 56. Now, let's maybe go back to the election before that. Um, it was quite a big difference. In fact, I, I think it's interesting to see that Joyce got 42% of the popular vote, only slightly more than this uh, Deborah Meredith in mm -hmm. the 2011 election. So she just squeaked through in 2011, but blew the lights out in 2015. And I wonder how much of that was just a, 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 a Harper protest vote. I think it was and, a Harper protest vote. And yeah. I think a lot of people were very excited about Trudeau. He's young. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's She's liberal. He says all the nice yeah. things, and and um, I, you know I, the word conservative is is kind of a dirty word. I mean now now liberals kind of been conflated with all sorts of other things that aren't so yeah. great either. Yeah. So yeah, maybe it was more of a protest against Harper. Yeah. He's like someone told me we in Canada we don't vote people in, we vote people out. Yeah. So there well, might have been some of that. That's probably likely what's going to happen in this next election. Yeah. Uh, I think there's going to be a lot of protest votes. Um, I mean mine won't be a protest vote, but I still won't be voting. For uh, Trudeau, um, but one of the questions I wanted to ask you is: um, Joyce has gotten she's she's been reelected four times in a mm -hmm. row, and there's go, there's bound to be people showing up at that voting poll who are basically undecided walking in. They're still not sure. Maybe they're a lean, sort of left leaning liberal type that's kind of deciding between NDP or the Greens or the Liberals. Yeah. Or maybe they're just a pure swing voter like me who can be open to any buddy any party any individual but at the end of the day when they get to that ballot box they check Joyce and they don't check somebody else they were kind of thinking about yeah what do you think it is that is motivating those people in the end what is what's kind of pushing them to just check that Joyce box and not somebody else like not check Sandra not check Kathleen because it's familiar yeah. and it's, it's the devil you know and I'm not saying that she's the devil here but um it's it's they already know it they say okay we're just gonna life isn't so bad right now it's kind of nice so I'm just yeah. gonna keep voting this way they're they're not um well the outrage factor isn't there like it is yeah. for 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 me i mean i i had a very nice life but now i'm running and i don't sleep and i don't, yeah. <laughs> I don't get to imagine all that and that's and that's okay i'm happy to do it yeah but because that was because the outrage factor was there when when you know my taxes are through the roof and the, the government yeah. is literally getting more of my hard-earned cash than than i sure. am and between property sales whatever taxes there are yeah. And and that bothers me a lot. And and when this whole culture of of control, 
I, I don't like that. I can't yeah. live with that. I mean, yeah. My family came here because of the freedom in Canada. Yeah. Sure. And that's the freedom to think what you want, do what you want, as long as you're not bothering anyone. Yeah. But now you're not even allowed to say anything. Yeah. I can't have that. Yeah. Okay. Like, I can't Great. have that. It Great. was very sad. I asked my dad, I said, what happens if it gets worse? What are you thinking? And he goes, yeah. I'll have to go back to Turkey. <laughs> uh, wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's... <laughs> Wow. <laughs> With President er Erdogan. 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 Oh. I mean, he's a, a semi-dictator. I think if we're getting that point where people are wanting to move to Turkey yeah. from Canada, no knock against Turkey, but no, then, I know. then then we're in real dire straits. Yeah. Well, let's talk about money for a moment. Let's talk about balancing budgets. Um, the Trudeau government basically came out with their latest figures uh, with their, you know, on their current platform where they basically have now pretty much said, we're never going to balance the budget. We're just going to keep running. Just keep pushing it down the line. They, yeah, and they're, and, they're you projecting know. 197 million. It's so interesting. They chose not to get to 100. 97 million dollars is what a billion dollars billion, yep. is what they're expected to incur in additional deficits in the next five years. Uh, what is what is the PPC's position on this? And um, what's your view on this? Uh, our position. We think that's a bad idea. Yeah. And yeah, we want to eliminate it. And as you and I talked about, it's like your credit card is already maxed. I mean, you're going to get to a point where you're unable to make the payments on that card, even sure. if you're willing to live with a max credit card. Yeah. That is where we are. Right. So right now, as it is, they brag about, the liberals are bragging about how many jobs they've created. They've created no jobs. They have taken money from the taxpayers and, and doled it out to other people. Government cannot create jobs. The market can create jobs. Exactly. That's it. Yeah. So anything the jobs the government created, yes, someone's getting handed a paycheck. Yeah. It's not sustainable. Yeah. So when we run out of people actually making money, making surplus, able yeah. to afford things other than food and shelter, um, and if they're taking it away, you're you're not going to have that that pot of money to 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 give to you. It's going to drive up interest rates. So they're going to it's going to be debt or taxes. Right. So eventually, they're you know you can't draw draw you know whatever the, the saying is you, you're not going to get any more money and blood from a stone because yeah. if, if there's no blood there and and then it means you're just going to go further into debts which means further and further longer and longer our kids their kids yeah. are not going to have the opportunity to prosper and that is anti-freedom it's not just about money yeah. it's also about power and control mm -hmm. so this this wealth redistribution programs really is frightening to me it's yeah. anti-freedom so what would the PPC do if they were uh, in a position of power? Maybe they, maybe we have a minority government with uh, the Conservative Party and uh, there's enough MPs to get elected under PPC that they yeah. are now, they kind of hold the balance of power. What's the type of things that the PPC would want to it's do? It's right on our, uh, we, we really want to reduce the, 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 the welfare, the corporate welfare. It, okay. It's it's also anti-free market. It's taxpayer dollars going yeah. to support a handful of people. In the worst case scenario, and what kind of industries out of interest? I don't know if you if you've dove into this enough. Do you know, well, what there's you Bombardier yeah. is getting them. There are all sorts of small ones too. Those are the the big ones. Maple Leaf and yeah. and the oil and gas industry. Those are yeah. the the big ones. But you know the one that bothers me the most. GM it, it bothers it, me the most. GM. Oh, yeah. did they get a lot of money? They got some money, yeah. and then they. They hauled out of Canada. Right. Oh, but the, was that yeah, the so, Oshawa? Yeah, yeah, that's the Oshawa plant. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's. <laughs> no, you know what it bugs me the most, and one of the things I really love about Maxime Bernier, and I think unfortunately was the reason why he lost the conservative leadership bid, was uh, supply management and the dairy farmer cartel. They are dairy farmer yeah, cartel. Yeah, and he's, we're still on that. I mean, because that's that you're not yeah. really if you're doing that, you're not taking care of Canadians. You're taking care of a small group. That means yeah. every single one of us has to pay more to help a small group. I would yeah. like the idea of every single one of us paying a bit to help everybody. Yeah, you know, absolutely. that's gonna like, like, you know, you, our, our medical system, it, it can be run a little better. I, we got the strip torn off of us by a doctor, but that's not us, but all, yeah. all of us on a panel at a debate. Yeah. So the other parties as well. But um, that to me is, is it's, it's, it's either cronyism yeah. or just bad business. The idea yeah is to is to create jobs but it yeah. doesn't create if there's no market you're not going to create jobs you're going to have to so it, it moves jobs so this company yeah. that wasn't getting the help is going to lose the job so this if you're selling a product the demand is is probably finite yeah or you know inelastic for yeah. whatever product it is yeah and and so you're just moving money around yeah, and sure. and the part that really bugs me is the guys at the top of these companies that, that made the bad decisions that got them into some sort of near insolvency, if not actual insolvency, are still getting their, their bonuses and their yeah, fat paychecks. Sure. You know, as a private business person, 
if I make bad decisions and have a bad year, yeah, you don't I'm get paid. on my own. Yeah. I don't get paid. And yeah. and this has happened. There are years where, you know, the, the ownership takes less than than the employees and that's Absolutely. fine because then next year we're gonna we're gonna be still be there yeah. and, and make money next year. Yeah. And that's the idea. Yeah. And uh, no it's it's very unfair. It's anti it's it's anti competition. It's yeah anti-freedom and it's a real waste of so, taxpayer so, dollars. So one of the ways in which the PPC would basically save us a lot of money um, as a country that. is just get rid of all subsidies altogether. Yeah. What about the CBC? Yeah, that's right up there. Yeah. That's right up there. At the very least, the news portion yeah. and all news portions is $600 million and it didn't go to just the CBC. It went to other yeah. other um, news outlets. but <laughs> Mainstream media. Mainstream media. Not the rebel. Uh, no, not the rebel media. Yeah. Not others either. No, Rebels, not, they're, they're, they're the loudest. Yeah, yeah but, but And but you don't have they, to like the rebel. They, yeah, you could even take the other left-leaning ones like the Observer or Time. Yeah. They didn't get any money either. They didn't get any money either. Yeah. And that's not okay. Either yeah. they get it or no one yeah. gets it. That's how I see it. Yeah, sure. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, that, that's got to end. There. And yeah. And also um, Canada Post, that, sure. that's got to get privatized. Yeah, you know, Canada Post just announced their, uh, one of the, I mean, they they get huge losses every year, but yeah. there was something where they, they lost, what was it, something like, uh, I don't know, it was like $7 million for, it was something, one of the strangest things, I, got, I don't know if you can find it, Ross, there was like a, it, it came out in the news just in the last couple of weeks um, on Canada, Canada Post, you just look for Canada Post losses, but I know that the conservative government under Harper had planned to basically get rid of home delivery and have these like, boxes. boxes and they actually even started installing them yeah. in Eastern Canada. And like then they would we, like in a sub subdivision. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is actually not that inconvenient. It's pretty simple. You get to also see your neighbors a lot easier than you can, you know. When I wonder about someone that doesn't have good mobility though. Sure. But I'm sure you can create, you know, some, some kind of measure to help offset the, you know, to deal with that. Okay. I mean, the amount of savings you're going to have by mm -hmm. those kind. So is there, do we find it on there? No. Anyways, they had some loss, but I do agree that I think Canada Post needs to be completely rejigged. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's well, there's just, just too much competition, and it came about in a in a time where there wasn't yeah all these other delivery services yeah that are doing a, a better job yeah I mean to you know you, you mail a letter when are you going to get it you courier the letter and it's just going to be like the next day yeah. if <laughs> I mean if it's local it's sure. going to be faster than that so now one of the things that um, that the NDP have been big on is, uh, it, and I'm not sure about the other parties, but I was just thinking about this last night, and I'd like curious to get your thoughts, or if you know what the PPC's position is on this, is to do with big media giants like Netflix and Amazon and whatnot, who don't have, uh, they don't pay, I mean not Amazon, but definitely like Netflix and these other media companies that uh, stream videos and whatnot, mm -hmm. and they're not paying taxes in Canada. What are your views on that? Um, I think if they're working in Canada, they should be held to the same standards as a, as a Canadian competitor. Yeah. So yeah, they should. So otherwise, we'll be, otherwise we're allowing another country to benefit from our taxpayers and our market. Yeah. So yeah, I would say they they need to. I don't even know if there is a Canadian, an actual Canadian Netflix. I mean, I know we've got Netflix.ca, which is a Canadian version, but it's not. Yeah. I don't think it's owned by Can Canadians. No, 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 it's owned so, by Netflix. So yeah. So but basically there's no, they don't pay any tax in Canada. Yeah. You know? that, that'll that be an interesting thing to see how this pans out. I mean, I'm looking forward to 10 years from now when we see yeah. how we manage the whole internet and, 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 and electronic business Yeah, and how we've decided to, to, to deal with that in terms of regulation or taxation. Yeah. 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 So now you hear, you hear uh, Maxine Bernier often quote this phrase. He says over and over again, the people's party of Canada represents uh, the f fundamentals of, and it's something like freedom. And oh, respect what, and fairness and, yeah. and self-reliance. Yeah. yeah. Can you talk to some of those items? Sure. The freedom is the freedom to, to, to pursue your dreams and to say what you want and, 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 and do what you want. The, the respect is to, to have the respect from government and for government. The government, I don't like that they, they can walk in and make decisions for us, including your property, including your, um, including First Nations, which is a whole other, whole other topic on its own. So yeah, we, we, we well, need. What, look, one of your, one of your constituency groups is, I mean, right, is Musqueam, a very mm -hmm. large um, First Nations um, band here in, in BC. Yeah. What is your position on First Nations? Where 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 do you? Well, put Maxime in? just announced a, uh -huh. a plank on First Nations, and I think it 
probably more filled out than it is in my head. And I have yeah. actually asked Maxime this myself yeah. because I, I care about that. Yeah. And and but what's your view? Let's see. I mean, you may my not personal know the, view. Yeah. What's your? I mean, well, how, I didn't know until I started going to politics that. Yeah. Um, that the reserve system is just that land is reserved but it's not really theirs it's kind yeah. of theirs to use yeah, so maxime sure. is talking more about um actually giving them la the land like in the way you or i own our yeah, houses sure. they don't own the reserve the yeah. way you and i own our property yeah. meaning that they can't leverage it for yeah. investment and they, no. they can't really do get, anything get without talking to, yeah. the, to the government and and that's a huge poverty trap and that's max's words it's yeah. a poverty trap yeah and and I think that's there's something to that. Yeah. 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 Land is wealth. It, it always was and it still is. Yeah. So yeah. there's just because they have a place to to plant their house doesn't yeah. mean it's it's really theirs. No, not if it's not if they don't have proper ownership over it. Like, that's right. Yeah. Like, like a freehold title. Yeah. So that's that's where he's going with that. And I think that's going to help with with poverty rates. Yeah. In general, then there's no reason that these guys can't be as enterprising as as everyone else and so many sure. are but they, yeah. they shouldn't have to to leave the reserve to 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 accumulate wealth sure unless yeah. they want to and that's yeah. fine too yeah but yeah it's but, about half and half and then the half that lives off reserve does financially better yeah so i don't think that's right yeah i mean they should be able to stay if they if that's what they want they could still live collectively if that's yeah. how they so choose yeah so that's important. Also, back to the pipeline for just yeah, a moment. Yeah, sure, yeah. That will catapult these people into prosperity. Okay. Yeah, and the 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 the, the bands that are affected by pipeline. That, that's they'll really be able gonna, to generate revenue or exactly uh, negotiate uh, negotiate terms. and and yeah, it's value. It has tangible value. Sure. So I think yeah. that's going to be great for them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Now, Sandra, one of the things that I've, as I've been, you know, a supporter of Maxime since he left the Conservative Party and mm -hmm. launched the People's Party. Were you a uh, supporter before he left? Uh, of Maxime. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Like okay. I've been, I, since I've known about Maxime since pretty much when he ran for the Conservative Party. The leadership. I'm not, I'm not actually a member of the People's Party. I'm actually not a member of any political party, mm -hmm. but I donate to mostly individuals. Um, I don't even vote, donate to parties, although I think I, I think I did donate to the People's Party. Just because I like what he was doing and trying to get it, help it get off the ground. We need we need every cent we can yeah, get. We're I'm a new sure. party. Yeah, you know, yeah. you don't have the kind of liberal conservative budget. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that I've been criticized of, or people criticize me for, is saying, "Well, you're splitting the vote. You know, you're 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 actually going to make it harder for the conservative government, to, a conservative party, to get a seat." And get more seats, yeah. and so therefore you're just going to be end up. We're going to get another four years of, of liberal, Trudeau. Yeah. And then I look at it and go, well, I mean, you could also make the same argument on the other side because there's like left leaning voters who are going to say, well, I got a choice between NDP, Green, or Liberal. And I, I, you know, I had Hetty Fry in here the other day and she actually spoke about this. And I think she was spe specifically addressing this because I think she's worried about the Green Party capturing more votes. She's right. In the Vancouver Center. And so she was trying, I think, to encourage people who listen to this podcast to vote Liberal simply if they don't even like the liberal party because they just shouldn't, they don't want to have the conservative party. Like it was, she actually said, we I said, are you talking about a strategic vote? And she said, yes. And I don't like that idea. It's unprincipled. I, mean, I know it's, it's, I, I just don't think I, I mean, I wouldn't want to see people voting. I'm not out going of strategy. to do that. Yeah, obviously. So do you have any comments or thoughts yes, when do. people say to you, I'm, I'm sure you've heard it because you're running. Yes, I do hear it. And, and I, do I heard that. Oh, you saying, oh, you're taking votes. Funnest away one was a troll, but that came up to me in Carisdale and, and was like talking about splitting the vote and, and, and <laughs> splitting the vote and that accused me of being a, a Trudeau operative. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> oh my, <laughs> okay. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but um, first of all, you need to vote your principles sure. or else you're just gonna keep getting what you got. Yeah. So that is one thing. As far as strategic voting, splitting the vote, um, there are a lot of liberal supporters for our party because, you know, when it comes to free speech and compelled speech and corporate welfare, those are very, we have very liberal party, typical liberal positions on those. Sure. We're not just an alternate conservative party. Yeah. Because it was socially, Maxime, as you know, is is quite liberal, even yeah. libertarian. So. Yeah. So that's not, we're not an alternate conservative party, even though fiscally our views are quite conservative, more than the conservatives, yeah. but not socially. Yeah. So I think we're, we're getting attention from, from traditional liberal voters. 
but we have a lot of undecided voters, swing yeah. voters and undecideds. Yeah. And I think I think we're going to pick up a lot of votes from there because yeah. now now we're going to a lot of people don't even vote because they're indifferent. Yeah. We're we're made, we're, you're, we're closing you're that, that gap. Yeah, because we yeah, because we've got something that you're not going to be indifferent about. It's not going to be kind of two sides of the same coin thing. Do you like yeah. red or do you like blue? That's where that's where it is. We've actually got something different to offer. Yeah. So, yeah, okay. I think people are going to be surprised. On okay, voting good, day. good. Let's have a quick look at the map one more time here as we go to wrap this up. Um, this is Vancouver Quadra. Mm -hmm. And you can see, I think, is this the old one, Ross? That's the yeah, old one. I, I found the small one, but it's just a tiny it's, picture. It's, so okay. it's just so yeah, it's, it's, it's our Butus and West. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, so only that's only slight, only it's only slightly but, different. Yeah. Yeah. But what's fascinating about this, Sandra, and I don't know if you have any thoughts or comments about this. I did ask uh, Kathleen and um, Lee both about this. Is You've got a very wide mix of people. You've got yes. the First Nations in Musqueam. Yeah. You have uh, a huge swath of students and other people that are living out um, permanently at UBC. Mm -hmm. um, you have, you know, your professional, you know, mo you know, thirty-year-old millennials that are living down in Kitsilano. Yep. You've got the kind of uh, more, you know, maybe white-collar working professionals that are in yeah. Dunbar and Point Grey. Mm -hmm. So you gotta, you gotta somehow collect a lot of. You got to you got to inspire a lot of people from a lot of different walks yeah. of life. Any thoughts about that? Well, so with some some areas are more friendly toward us than others just yeah. because of our positions on taxation and there's um so Have you been doing a lot of door knocking? Yeah. Yeah. I have and, and I've what, got a few what, volunteers. What areas do you find are kind of really fit, you know kind of Harrisdale is good yeah. and and our area of, you know, West Point Gray. Yeah. People are good. You get um you get into kits and all that. There's like, "Oh, you hate the environment. You're going to kill us all." <laughs> okay. Right. <laughs> or whatever else you're fascist I'm like do you even know what that means yeah sure <laughs> yeah. amazing yeah let's well, the young people they got yeah. all head up i'm sure that's what i was when i was young too yeah. i don't remember but <laughs> yeah so yeah we, we we but you still gotta win some of those votes right? we do gotta win some of those votes and 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 the, the ones we talk to yeah are that haven't already made up their minds are amenable to to hearing things like no corporate welfare yeah. and you know et cetera et cetera and and you know people talk about we, we we want less immigration than the other parties yeah and uh and that seems to be a contentious issue now, that's some. interesting I, I think we should talk about that for a minute because you're, sure. you're an immigrant i am an immigrant you, you're, you're a born, lot of our ppc candidates are immigrants yeah right. so, so are you are you anti-immigrant no, no i'm not okay. anti-immigrant in any way and neither is the ppc otherwise right. our number wouldn't be 150,000. it'd be closer to zero yeah sure right? or yeah. something like it we'd call for a moratorium but that's not that's not yeah. at all it. We we need to. Um, th these are like pre twenty fifteen levels. It's not. Yeah. This is not radical. Yeah. On a per capita basis, these three hundred fifty thousand people numbers are higher than the U S. and sure. in European country. Yeah. So it doesn't make sense. And also, I have to ask: you, Do any of these people that are proponents of that three hundred fifty thousand number? consider um our absorption capacity sure where are these people going to live yeah where are they going to work yeah right absolutely so if you're not Sandra. considering that yeah you are setting these people up for failure yeah 100%. okay they are not going to get to live the canadian dream they are going to be amazing listening yeah. to you talk because you you're basically speaking what i've been preaching to my own <laughs> staff in my kind of breaks yeah here's my here's my issue with the immigration um I feel like what we see happening with the Liberal Party and Justin Trudeau is they love to have this big fanfare. It's as virtue more, as, signaling. As, totally. As these people come in, especially the, the one I'm most concerned about are refugees, because these are people coming from war-torn countries, people who've spent many, many years, maybe a decade, of having planes flying over and dropping bombs, not yeah. knowing if they're going to live you know, to the next morning. These people come with very serious PT. And it's nothing wrong with these people, but let's admit to what they're dealing with. They're coming in with very serious PTSD and they need they need resources. They need to have, to get themselves up on their feet might be a lot, lot more work than maybe someone like your father and your, your parents who came over yeah. from a non-war torn country. And the problem I have is these, these people get fanfared in, they get big cameras and lights and show and look at how many immigrants, you know, look at how many refugees we're bringing in and then the cameras and lights go away and these people are all banked, bunked up into a hotel 
They yeah, don't have, and they're they can't isolated. Work. They're isolated. Yeah, they're not integrated. They're, they're into mentally society. isolated, they're not mentally just physically. Isolated. Absolutely. So yeah, they're this is a problem. They're not given the proper, you know, counseling that they probably need. Medica- mental health yeah, medication. Yeah, and this is what I'm talking about. We're and setting them that's up for the failure. Yeah. That's the absorption capacity. Yeah. So we, you know, the. You know, liberals brag about how many people they brought in on the point system. 26% were brought in for on, on, on econo- as economic migrants. We want to up that quite a bit. Um, so we're going to focus on economic migrants. So people like my dad or whoever else with skills that have acquired marketable skills, they're going to hit the ground running. They're not yeah. going to need a lot of attention when they're landed here. Yeah. They're going to come here and live the, Ameri- the, the American dream, yeah. the Canadian, yeah. dream. Canadian dream. So yeah. and and. And, and that's kind of what we want to focus on. So yes, immigration, and yes, we need people to come here. We were built on immigration. Maxime said it a thousand times, even though he gets no credit for it. Yeah. But, yeah, but he does, he says it at every speech. Um, and, and that's good. So we want to focus on that. On, on the refugees, we still want to help refugees. We are Canadian, we do have heart. Yeah. We want to focus on on people that are persecuted minorities yeah. and from also from war torn countries. Like, yeah. You know the LGBTQ community sure. in, in certain countries in the East yeah. and and the Uyghur, Uyghur Muslims in China. Yeah. They need they need help. Yeah, they need to to get yeah. out of there. The Rohingya the, Muslims. The Rohingya Muslims. Yeah. The the um the 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 Yazidi Christians in Syria. The, right. These people are the yeah. ones that need help. The, the ones that are coming up from Roxham Road yeah. from the U.S. the slam dunk richest country in in the history of man. Yeah, I don't. We need to rescue them so fast. They need to yeah. knock on the front door and apply. Yeah, we need to slide sure. into the side door. Yeah, that's not well, acceptable. I mean, to me, when you claim refugee status, you really have to be coming saying like, if I if I stay where I'm at, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna, gonna die. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna be or killed. I'm gonna be or I'm gonna be tortured. Yeah. When you're a Nigerian who snuck into the United States illegally, and now you're just worried about Donald Trump picking you up and sending you home. So you walk across the Yeah, border. I think it's, it's it, really frightening that Mr. Trudeau says he'll accept those people. That's, yeah. I have a problem with that. Yeah. You know, in, in the old days, including my dad, every person used to have a face-to-face visit and Bernier wants to bring that back in. Right on. You, you get an interview. Yeah, You've got to sure. make sure it's a good fit, not just for us, but for them. Yeah, yeah, you know? 100%. Yeah. No, that's great. If you're not liberty-minded. Yeah. <laughs> I like this, Sandra. Uh, let's go to your website. Um, Let's just pop this up here. So the website address is. I think it's ppcvanquadra.ca. Yeah. Um, so there's me. They should put my picture up yeah. there. That seems wonderful, but. So this is, well, this is the, <laughs> this is the people's party of Canada.ca. Oh, Ross, don't we not, do we not have, I thought we had uh, yeah. uh, standards. Oh, okay. That, that yeah. is the. And so, Sandra, you, um, you've got, can you use people helping you out? Uh, if people want to help you out, how do they get in touch? They, they need to get in touch via the website. Okay. So, ppcvanquadra.ca or through okay. my Facebook. Yeah. You, you can find me. Or well, let's you get your name, your spelling. Sandra is easy, <laughs> but let's, again, your last name you pronounce it is Philosoph Philosoph Shipper. Philosoph it's Shipper. two names we yeah. hyphenated thinking okay. we were so <laughs> modern and egalitarian. Turns yeah. out it's just... Just in, in, you know, oh, kind of nice, inconvenient. Nice photo of you oh, there. Oh, thank so, you. My friend so, took it. <laughs> so, uh, so if they go to your, so let's just get the spelling right. So Sandra, S-A-N-D-R-A, uh, S-A-N-D-R-A, yep. and then your last name. Philosoph dash shipper, F-I-L-O-S-O-F dash S-C-H-I-P-P-E-R. Okay, great. And you are uh, the very first PPC Vancouver Quadra candidate. I hope you have lots of success. Thank you. We're only like, I think, what, how many days away? It's the fourth today. So we're only 17 17. days. Yep. Wow. Day 17. Well, well, good luck with it. It's been a great Uh, ride so far. Look forward to seeing how you do in this upcoming election. Thank you. And thank you so much for having me. This has been fun. Great. Thanks, Sandra.